I deal with color. And so often the colors relate to what's already on the canvas. So I'll start with two canvases that are dry, but they have different colors. So I'll pick up some blue. I'll dip into the walnut oil, pick up a little blue, turquoise blue and white, and I'll put this on there. So you're finding very early, that's a nice relationship. No blending, we just want to see what that looks like. We'll take the same color and put it over next to on the purple. Look at the difference. Here it's less of a contrast than there. Not saying that this is wrong. Here's the other thing I like to do with colors when you put them on as I've just done. If we have a paper towel and I wipe, so here it's color next to color. Now when I wipe and thin it out, you see color relationship, color through color. Look how that compares with this that hasn't been wiped. We'll do the same thing on this one. See, again, that's a nice relationship between those two. So you always decide when you're going to use a color, how should you use it? Thinly or a little more dark? And then there's another aspect that's helpful with colors, and I'll come down to the palette. We'll pick up a little bit of, let's take some green and white. This is a permanent green light and white. What I want to do on this is add some color into what's there. So this might be a dominant color. It could be a, a, could be a lake or a sky or what have you. And I'm not talking about where its position is, just that you've used the colors. Okay, and then it's, this is some of the green. And we, we put this on, and this just, oh, so nice. I get a feeling almost like there's some trees and a little flat water, and then in the water you're you're getting a little vibration with the greens. I'll, I'll wipe that just a little bit so you have use of that. And then we'll do the same thing over here, just a little bit of green. And wipe just a little bit too. I'm not saying one's better than the other. All I'm interested in, what's the relationship of the colors to one another? So therefore, which one should I use? And you could even say, okay, Let's do a further thing. Let's take some phthalo blue, and I'll go darker with the blue. So what am I comparing this time? Which blue should I use? Or should I use them both like this? I'll just soften this lower one just a little bit. This is a smaller space, but that's fine. You almost feel like there's a shore, uh, a bank, there's sky back there and there's some trees there. Oh, it's so fun to use your imagination. Now on colors, I often, I've used brushes there, I often will come down with a, with a knife. A knife will give you a little sparkle. Sometimes with a knife, you can, uh, you know, just kind of touch it on so it doesn't do much blending. And I'm not creating a scene. I don't want you to say, oh, I can see his river and his forest. I want you to judge the colors next to each other. Okay, this over, now here, you already have that pink on the canvas. You, could, you had the advantage of a little extra sparkle. Let's give this one a little extra sparkle. All right, now I want to come with pure white. See the relationship there? And then just watch what the color does when I take a knife and just kind of swish it around a little bit, take and push that around. Again, I'm watching what happens. What happens next to the color that its neighbor that is its neighbor. Push that around a little bit and then I can come back 
with just a little extra white. See, so you find in this case, we put light on, the white on, I push it around, which soften it a little bit into the colors, and then you come back and put extra white on without softening it. So you have a sparkle and you really created a little podium for the white to stand upon. Taking some of this just to push around there. Okay, let's do one other thing. Let's take um, yellow and white. And now, as I do this, I'm not necessarily going to go on both canvases anymore. That uh, was strictly to show you that the priming underneath can be used to help the color you put on top. Okay, here is some strong light. And notice how good that looks against both the green that's there and the, the little blue that's there. I'll come with more white. and push this around, and as I push this around, it, it blends in very well with the yellow that's already there. Okay, I want to do one thing now, and I want you to look at the palette. This, this is something I like to do at the end of a day when I've been working hard all day on pictures and a lot of, lot of tedious studying and so on. Let's take this over. Okay, now watch this. I'll just kind of run these colors together a little bit. It's just marvelous what happens when you have colors that work with each other. I'm not trying to create any special subject, but I want to have a lake. It's kind of like a lake, isn't it? Look at the use of those colors. That exciting. And then just because we uh, have such joy in color, let's take and say, OK, that's the light coming straight down right in the front. And we'll put some pure white into that. OK, I'll just push this around a little bit more. It's, it's almost a reward for the, the work that you do in advance, and then you can have some fun. You really enjoy experimenting with your colors. And you, you say like this, you can say, OK, well, I'll experiment. I'll put just a little bit down, see how it looks. You don't have to do the whole big thing, but I, but I hope this gives you a feeling that colors can be exciting. They can energize your, your subject, and as long as you use the principles of composition and values and so on, then you can do it. Colors are different to each person. So it's not a case of, I like your colors, I don't like yours. Just are all the ingredients there. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. This program is funded by the North Dakota Council on the Arts. The Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4th, 2008. And by the members of Prairie Public. <laughs>